you're cursing them now, but you want to take a selfie with them later because now they're playing a pawn, they're being a pawn in your game. And that's that's freaking wicked. You know, you can't be too bad to go to heaven, but you can be too good to go to heaven. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, you can't be too bad, but you can be too good. What I mean by that is you're trusting in your own goodness. Yeah. Anybody pride. who will admit, yeah, pride. And anybody who will admit they're horrible and they're a sinner and that they need the forgiveness of Jesus, yeah, like I don't care how bad it is. You can't be too bad, mm-hmm. but you can be too good. And the older brother in the story of the prodigal son is a prime portrait yes. of that. And that's why I love the prodigal son because Jesus allows the story to fade to black and never tells us if the older brother comes into the party. Because to prove, you can't be too bad, but you can be too good. Please tell that story if you don't mind. The prodigal son? Yeah, a summary. Yeah, just basically the, there's two boys. They're, they have a gracious dad. The dad you know, has this inheritance, and the younger brother is basically a knucklehead, and he looks his dad square in the face, and he says, give me my money now, which is literally telling the dad, I wish you were dead because you didn't get your, your inheritance until your father passed away. So he's like, unfortunately, you're in too good a health, and I don't want to wait around for you to croak. Uh, give me my money now. And the dad is wildly gracious and gives him the money. So the long story short is the son uses the money to live prodigally. The word prodigal means wasteful. He uses his money to live prodigally, wasted on whatever, frivolous living, whatever, give him a hit of dopamine, release his serotonin, got to work it in there. Um, (laughs) But he finds himself running out of money. And when he runs out of money, the economy crashes. They literally find themselves in a famine. So he finds himself taking a job slopping pigs, which this is no doubt a Jewish boy in the story. He is not to have anything to do with pigs, yet he takes a job Mm. slopping pigs. Now he has not only turned his back on his earthly father, he has turned his back on his heavenly father. So he takes the job slopping pigs, eventually is so hungry that he, he thinks to himself, you know what, my dad's hired servants have it better than this. This is a detail of the story I never realized until recently. The entire country's in a famine. And there's only one place that has bread, mm-hmm. and it's the, the house. father's house. He's like, mm-hmm. and nobody got bread but dad. Yeah. Even when the whole country's in ruin, dad's house still has enough. I'm here to tell you, your, ha- your, your answer is in the house of God. There is always bread mm-hmm. in the house of God. Sure. So he thinks, man, if there's still, my, my Most dad's Most people high. don't even know there's a famine in that story. No, they so. don't. Because they, nobody ever mentions <laughs> it's, it's not it. not American. No, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, uh, it's, 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 <laughs> they're in the Middle East, guys. <laughs> okay. So... He finally, long story short, goes home, prepares this whole speech. He, you know, he talks about, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. As soon as he tries to get his speech out, the dad basically is like, shut up. He, mu- he muffles his speech with his kisses. He muffles his speech with his embrace. He's like, mm-hmm. I, I don't care about your speech. Like, I don't want your resume. You know, I think that's what God's going to look at a lot of us when we get to heaven and say, like, we're going to get up there and be like, God, here's all the, all the reasons you should let me in. I gave this. I served here. I went here. I denied myself that day. And God's like, shut up. Don't give me your resume. The only resume that got you in here is my son. And I can't wait to introduce you to him. Come on in here and enjoy your father's rest. Right. Come on. So the father muffles the son's speech and, you know, escorts him off to a dance floor. Right. To celebrate his return. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, there's an older brother who did not take the path the younger brother took. He's been working hard. He's diligent. He's he's, he's done he, the right. He's things. done the right right things, but his heart is far from the father. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, the older brother gets in a tirade upon hearing that his younger brother's been given a party, and he's making such a ruckus that the father leaves the party. Now, notice this: the father in the story got up off the porch and ran to the younger son. Yeah. But the right. father leaves the party to go to the older son. So whether you're on this end of the, the spectrum or you're this end of the spectrum, you're, you're, you're too bad or you're too good. The answer is still the same. Yeah. Jesus coming to you. So he leaves the, leaves the party, <laughs> goes and speaks to the older brother and says, hey, like what's going on? The older brother you know, basically just yells for a long time. And the dad says, hey, you know, all this time you've been with me, everything that I have is yours, but we had to celebrate because this brother of yours was dead and now he's alive. And so, and that's, in my opinion, that is the most profound how many story Jesus people, tells. How many of us, let's use him as a practical example. He just, you just made it to, you know, a little shameless plug. He just qualified for San Antonio Stock Show Rodeo, Houston Stock Show Rodeo with his rope in. Big thing, big, big account. Deal. It's, big, it's big one deal. of those things. It's like a stepping stone to where he wants to go. But like, let's just, say he just did that. And instead of me celebrating him, what does that benefit me? Exactly. That's exactly what he's doing. Because everyone is a pawn in my little game. 
Yeah. Everyone. And as soon as it's, one pawn does something I don't think is going to benefit me. Like what? Like, you like text me you're like, God. hey, did you get that VIP pass for Hey, me? like, like do, I, get do, I, do I get backstage with my video camera since you're in San Antonio? <laughs> like, what does this benefit me? Versus it's because we are God. In our mind, we are God. Yeah. You're yeah. supposed to be serving me. Right. Yeah, and, and you making that stock show and rodeo, the San Antonio stock show and rodeo, doesn't serve me. Right. So you, you're in rebellion. What are you doing? You're deviating from the plan. Yeah. I want to smite you. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's because in, our, in the deep recesses of our soul, even though we would never vocalize it out loud, we are the God of our life. And when we recognize that, when we cannot celebrate what God is doing in somebody else's life, and you know, you may never write a check to my ministry with the earnings that you get from rodeoing, but I will still celebrate you all day long because I, it's not about me serving me. It's not about how does your life enrich my life. Mm -hmm. It's, man, I can't believe God would do that for you. That's incredible. Let me celebrate the heck out of that. You know, And then that allows you to really begin to open doors for people that you're never going to get to walk through. You know, just like the other day, we were kind of having a moment and, you know, I wanted, you, you had a guy that you wanted to kind of get to know. And I was like, dude, I know him. Like, yeah. let me open yeah. the door. That may never, that may never do anything for me, yeah. but I love you right. and I believe in you and I want to open a door for you. I want to see, I want to see God do incredible things through you. And my joy is watching God use you and watching mm -hmm. God open doors for you. And if I can be just a door holder in your life then that is sad. Please, that is please share the door holder in the house of God. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So basically there's this famous verse. David says this, I would rather be a door holder in the house of God than to be in the tent, than, than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Right. Most of us just think that's just some minuscule little deal. It's like a greeter at a church. No big deal. Like, Hey everybody, I'm not the, I don't have to be the pastor. I don't have to be on the platform. Team. Yeah. I'd rather be on the serve team, <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. David is, David is talking about meeting at a synagogue, right? With Jews, Jewish people in order to be in covenant had to be circumcised. Okay. So literally the door holders job at the, at, at, in the house of God was to check <laughs> if you were circumcised upon entering the house of God. He literally had to go, excuse me, sir. <laughs> All right, you're good. <laughs> come on in. Oh, not you. You can come back later. Uh, there's a surgeon down the road. <laughs> and so basically- There's a surgeon down the road. There's a surgeon down the you're road. You're welcome here. Just I got my old timer pocket knife here. You know what I mean? We can fix this real quick. I, you look like you need to get in the presence hey, of God. What did you say? He was the original pecker checker. <laughs> <laughs> the original. So David is quite literally saying, I'd rather have to inspect men's genitalia than go spend one second in the in the tents of the wicked. And obviously there's nothing weird or nefarious about him saying that. He's saying, I'd rather have the lowest and most undesirable position in the church. Nobody right. wants to go around doing that. He said, I'd rather be doing that than to dwell in the tents of the wicked, you know? And I'd so rather good. be a door holder in your life than to sit off and wickedly have these thoughts in my heart of why is God doing that for him and not me? You have no, and you also have no idea how down the line God could use somebody in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're, you're cursing them now, but you want to take a selfie with them later because now they're playing, a pawn, they're being a pawn in your it's game. True. And that's, that's freaking wicked. It's not cool. It's true. <laughs>